So welcome to a Zero to Asic course YouTube channel interview and this time super cool in the flesh. <laughs> Finally, with Michael, Mikhail, how do you yes. pronounce it? Michael is fine. Michael, and um, you may know Michael from his Zepto Bars account on Twitter and if you don't, you should definitely go there and follow him because he's always posting amazing micrograph photos and writing on your blog. Yes, and it's been quite a number of years. It looks mm. like it's been 12 years already. Wow, yeah. So we're here in um, Switzerland, in Zurich, and I was visiting uh, ETH Zurich for the EFCL summer camp, doing the microelectronics track with uh, the Open Road team. Matt Liberty was there, as well as Osama. And uh, we met up last night for a, a sausage and a beer. <laughs> and I... Um, took the opportunity to bring uh, Michael some chips. So, tell us what we did. So, of course, I mean, what can I do? Uh, you get an ass chip, you get some acid, you put the chip in the acid. <laughs> this is what we did. Uh, but the hope at the end to see the, see the inside. And typically I used to work with the chips where uh, somebody else did, maybe many years ago, maybe 40 years ago. But in this case, it was not somebody. One of the designs was mine, so it was double yeah. the interest. Yeah, tiny tape out. Yeah. So you put uh, designs on, I think you did a, a ring oscillator design on tiny yes. tape out too. Yes, or three. Yeah, very suspicious design. Yeah. Some of the people were a little bit concerned yeah. because it was not gated, it was always on. And everybody else, when they run the designs, the oscillators are always working. Mm. So. But with tiny tape out four, we had the uh, the power gated, so we weren't worried for that. Oh yes, 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 mm. very good. Mm. <laughs> uh, so and um, to open the chips, typically I use the acid process. So there are many ways to do it, and the acid. I mean, historically it worked the best. I worked with the sulfuric acid, and the the main reason is ninety eight percent is the one you get. It's the most common one. And in case of a nitric, you do not get typically 100%. It's too sensitive uh, topic. Mm. Um, the disadvantage, of course, is sulfuric acid requires much higher temperature. So in our case, we were approximately have been at 250 degrees. Mm -hmm. But at the cold state, it is safer. I have seen some people even putting their fingers into the sulfuric acid and without any permanent damage. But don't try this at home. And I never did that. <laughs> Hopefully. And uh, you can see from the video that Michael is using gloves and yeah. obviously you need to be safe doing these kinds of things. Yes, and also it's important to notice that. In, in, in our case, um, it's always important to wear protective equipment and you wear it not because you expect something to go wrong, it's because something unexpected might happen. Mm. Uh, so just important not to be complacent, especially like when you do something for 12 years, you think, okay, it will be like always. Hmm. Um, and it's important to mention that I, I show that I'm hitting the test tube with the, with the jet flame. So it, it is only possible to do it with the quartz tubes because it's, how to say, it's very, very aggressive, but it's hmm. very fast. Uh, in, a, in a soft flame, the regular tubes should survive. And at the end, hopefully, we will see uh, some video of the, of the chip itself. Uh, as one might expect, it's like 180 nanometers? Or 130. 130. So yeah. on, on those nodes, most of the top metal is already like solid in fill, mm. PDM. In the older, like 600 nanometers, 800, typically you can see inside, but not, not here. Mm. So we'll see if we will be able to remove the metal as well. Yeah, so where we've got so far is just the top metal and you can see the, the power distribution network and all the fill and uh, some of the, the cool stuff around in the, in the pad frame. And so what's the process that you're going to attempt to remove the rest of the metal? So the, the two main approaches is the, the polishing or the chemical process. And then the chemical process is basically the uh, mixture of acids based on hydrofluoric acid. So, which makes it a little bit more dangerous, I would mm. say. In the past, I even had nightmares about the hydrofluoric acid. Yeah. Um, so it dissolved glass and um, it also slowly eats metals. And this is what we need. We need to dissolve the glass. Mm. Uh, 
But when I was first getting the hydrofluoric acid, it's people are scared of it for, for the right reasons. Mm. And this is why the shop declined to sell me a small amount. So I had to buy 25 liters. Ooh. That was a very bad idea. Mm. <laughs> it took me quite a lot of effort to get rid of it. I mean, to find someone who will buy the rest mm. because it's, it's insanely large. Mm. And to maybe I'll, for the, my, for the whole history of Zepta bars, I used maybe 50 milliliters. Okay. So how, when, so we're going to put this, uh, um, very, th it's already quite thin down, um, dye inside hydrofluoric. And then how do you stop it? Do you have to just keep on taking a look? How do you stop it from just dissolving the whole chip? Uh, it doesn't dissolve silicon. That's the bad, good okay. part. I mean, it's self, self-regulating process. Uh, to some extent, because at a certain point, the oxygen in the air starts to oxidate the silicon very slowly, like one atom per second. But if you keep it there for one hour, mm -hmm. the surface will be ruined. Okay. Uh, so from, the, from experience, I found this balance, how much you need, how much, which temperature, how much time to get minimal amount of damage. And then once we're at that substrate level, we, what will we see, the polysilicon? Uh, hopefully we will see polysilicon. Uh, it may be there, it might fall off, and mm. it, if it falls off, there is still, how to say it, the, the trace of it. Mm -hmm. So you can still see the structure of the standard yeah. cells. I mean, that's typically what you want to see, I mean, when you want to see the, the logic itself. Yeah. Because the metal is metal, it's yeah. quite boring. And um, one thing that we've been doing for the recent tiny tape out um, renders is the just the bottom layer where the the polysilicon is because it gives you a bit of an understanding of the density of the design. The more you have there, the darker it looks. The more logic you've got in the design, the denser the design. So that's kind of a, a cool way of visualizing which projects are really making the most use of the area and which ones are very like the analog and mixed signal ones. They look almost empty often compared to the 90% utilization digital standard cells. Yeah, but uh, you still need some free cells for decoupling, I yeah. think, so it's... Inevitable. Although they still look, they still have um, polysilicon in them, the decoupling, it's one side of the capacitor. Mm -hmm. I see. Yeah. If we, uh, if we look at the top metal picture, you see, I mean, there is not much to see here. Everything's covered by the metal and it's there to deliver power with a low impedance. Otherwise, the chip would work very, very slowly. And of course, through this top metal, we barely can see anything. Can you zoom in just so people can see the, the fill? Yeah. So the, like the, the vertical bars there are the power delivery. Um, Here. But then all the little squares, that's called fill. And the reason they do that is to try to achieve a, a uniform density across the chip because some of the processes in the chip manufacturing stage are grinding and polishing. And if you have some parts of the chip that's hard and other parts are soft, it doesn't grind at an even rate. And if you want to find out more about that, then check out my uh, video where I toured IHP um, foundry in Germany and saw how they make chips. Link above. Uh, so to remove these metals, I mean, uh, typically you etch metal with the acid, but mm -hmm. the issue of course is that there is a uh, glass around it. So each layer of metal is separated by a glass and acid, regular acid like uh, nitric acid or hydrofluoric acid cannot etch glass. And for that we need hydrofluoric acid. Uh, the, the minor issue with the hydrofluoric acid uh, other than its toxicity is that it's it's very weak acid. It etches metal very slowly. And actually it's, it's very fast at etching glass, but it's very slow at etching metal. So for optimal process, you might want to add some hydrochloric acid. So to equalize the etch rate of both metal and glass. But in this case, there was no this equalization. And what we get at the end is uh, we remove all layers of glass, all layers of metal and we reach the very bottom. Uh, typically polysilicon should not be etched, but the issue is uh, in many cases, polysilicon is not firmly attached to the, uh, to, to the substrate. 
And for example, if you have a gate, there is a tiny gate oxide under it and there is polysilicon on top of the gate. And it will also, I mean, it will fall off. So the polysilicon is not etched, but it falls off. And in this case, all the polysilicon fell off. And what the only thing that we see is diffusion areas. So what, what makes the little black outline that we're seeing here? I don't, I don't see, like what is left behind for us to see there? Uh, we only see a slight uh, like head differences uh, caused by diffusion process. That's my hypothesis. Because okay. when I, uh, it's a very rare case when you can take the image and compare it to a GDS and you like yeah. switch through all the layers and you see that it is diffusion. One second, let me go. So for example, if we go to the, to the memory area, um, memory area of the uh, Caravel microprocessor, microcontroller, which controls everything. And this is the memory, the DFF memory area. So those are diffusion areas that forms a DFF trigger. And the, they're also putting fill on diffusion layer as well then? Yes, yes, apparently yes. Okay. I never knew that. I thought there was just fill on the metal layers. Okay, and... One second, what we have. Okay, so this is how the, the whole chip looks like. Mm -hmm. and, and, and now we can see that, okay, there is a lot of, a lot of structure on the chip. So in the bottom, we see the, the caravel itself with the memory areas. In the middle, we see the, the control block of mm -hmm. tiny tape out and all the, all the details. And, and of course, on each design, you can see the slightly co slight color difference between the, the decap cells, which are very uniform and brown, and this greenish uh, area filled by actual uh, gates. Did you spot where your design is? Oh, yes, yes. It, it's, it's here. <laughs> nice. Um, uh, so this image is more uh, closer to what you look in the, how to say, the, the advertisements and the media articles because it looks nicer. Yes, uh, nicely uh, colored. <laughs> yeah. So to achieve that, it's just illuminated from the side so that the light diffracts on these field patterns on the chip. And this is how you get this various colors and quite easy to like see all the yeah, look, it looks, and you get such great contrast on the fill versus the standard cells there as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, beautiful photo. So and these are all just um to remind ourselves, is it all taken with your optical microscope that we saw earlier in the video? Yes, yes. Uh, th this one is not. I mean, this is uh, like a photo with the with the photo camera with the micro lens. Because yeah. it, it requires like regular light. Because typically okay. the microscope microscope illuminates the sample through the microscope lens. I mean the mm -hmm. metallographic microscope, and there you will not have the chance to see these colors. Because you'll project if the light is coming from the top rather than from the side. Yeah. Okay. And um, I think this is my design. <laughs> so I took some time to photograph it and yeah. to be able to compare it to the, to the, to the GDS and majority of it is, uh, is decap cells, of course. So. Yeah. And, and the control block. I mean, it, it doesn't look, uh, oh, it's the other way around. They look very similar. Um, th there is not much shear visible because it's only the diffusion area. I mean, it, with, when the polysilicon is still there or there is some remains of the polysilicon, it's much more interesting to see. But at least what we can see here is that uh, what we drawn in GDS is what was actually manufactured. So mm. there is no, no, no black magic, no shenanigans done by the factory. Yeah. So when you did the um, etching off of the metal and the glass, um, you just left the chip in there for a long enough time, checking checking on it until it was all dissolved away. Uh, pretty much, yes. So in the in my previous lab, I had this more automated machine which controls the temperature in time, and you just run it, and 15 minutes is done. But here it mm. was more manual, 60 degrees, 15 minutes, and it's more or less done. 15 minutes. Wow. Okay. Just quite and a short the, process. One of the challenges is that uh, at the end of the process, when you reach the very bottom, 
you have this exposed silicon surface and the acid that you that is that likes to etch any silicon oxide yeah but you also have oxygen in the air and you know that the silicon oxidizes in air so very slowly dissolved oxygen in the in the acid will oxidize the silicon and the acid will etch it so if you leave it for too long time it will it will dramatically degrade this nice picture that you mm. see here but otherwise yeah. it's quite straightforward process awesome yeah really beautiful pictures so i think that that concludes it yeah okay um just put maybe go back to uh sailing the ic's that's a good gag from me fabulous and the uh the uh, little gds art One we can second. end on that ah uh, so I... let me reshare it This one or the other one, the text sailing the ICs, yeah. <laughs> and so, what were, who's whose invention was that? I mean, what, what's the meaning? I'm not sure. Someone at Eve Habler. So Caravel is the name of the harness, and Caravel is also a type of sailing ship. And that's why the other picture is of a, a sailing ship. And then instead of sailing the high seas, it's sailing the ICs. <laughs> I see. So, um, Maybe just to end, because I think it's a good point just to draw attention to this, is one thing that you said earlier was it's rare that you get a chance to look at the GDS and the chip at the same time. So can you just explain why that is and why it's great to have this opportunity? Um, maybe I can show you the same what I, what I was showing in the, on the photos, but now on the in a K layout. Okay, so this is what we saw. Um, the thing is that typically um, what you see here is a big no-no. I mean, you can see it, if you signed a lot of NDAs and you have design files, but you cannot show it to anyone because it's covered by multiple layers of NDAs, zero chance anyone ever sees that. Because in the past, all these factories, for some reason, considered this uh, physical layout of the cells, uh, extremely sensitive uh, information. And you, in some cases, you never actually knew what exactly are the manufacturing, what's, what exactly behind the standard cells. But here, you can see everything you can expect. You can modify if you want. So the possibilities are endless. Great. Thanks very much for summing that up for us. Um, so I guess we'll call it a day there. Is there any last thing that you want to mention? I think uh, I'd like to thank you for making this a reality. I mean, this was my dream for maybe 15 years. And, you know, when we get older, we have a job, we have a lot of stuff to do, we never have time. But you made it in a way that it's very accessible with relatively low amount of time needed to, to get into this topic. So yeah. hopefully a lot of people will be involved. Yeah, and as uh, so we're saying, um, thanks to all the people who helped me make it a reality there's a big team um in the background doing a lot of the the work um so yeah thank thanks Mikhail. thanks again for doing the cool chip decapping glad to make your dream a reality um and if you want to make your dream a reality and tape out your own chips then check out tiny tape out or my course and sign up to the newsletter thanks for watching <laughs>